Hey, Crowd Vibers. Welcome to part one of a tutorial series I'm producing called How to Prepare for a Reggae Music Festival. Today, we're going to share some tips on getting you to the festival. But first, a quick disclaimer. This tutorial is not for camping festivals like Weekend at Wolfie's or Everwild. Camping festivals are a totally different ballpark and are out of scope for this tutorial. We've had a great opportunity to travel and attend several music festivals over the last few years. This includes Cali Roots in Monterey, Cali Vibes in Long Beach, Reggae Rise Up in St. Pete, and we discovered a new festival called Florida Groves in Orlando. So let's get you prepared for a reggae festival. The first thing you're going to need is a ticket to the show. Most festivals offer early bird pricing. This is going to be the best price at the best value. If you know you want to go and you don't care too much about the lineup, lock in those early bird rates. Most people are going into this with a budget. The next thing you're going to have to decide is whether you want to go GA, do you want to upgrade to VIP, or is there some other level with some other amenities that you just got to have? My advice to you, stay within your budget. If this is your first time going to a festival, I might recommend going the GA route. This will give you a chance to travel, check out the scene, see if it's a good fit, and if it's something that you enjoy. Festivals will typically sell multi-day passes as well as single-day tickets, but the most important thing I can tell you is to watch for scammers. If something's too good to be true, it probably is. Only purchase tickets from verified sellers and resellers. Next, you need to decide, how are you actually getting to the festival? Are you going to drive? Are you going to fly in? Is public transportation an option? If you're driving in, I recommend mapping out your route with plenty of rest along the way, depending on how far you need to travel. If you're flying in, book your tickets early to save. Maybe your travel dates are flexible. You can arrive a day early or maybe stay a day late to save on airfare. But keep on mind, additional nights for lodging and budget for food. This is a great segue to our next topic, lodging. We have so many great options for lodging today. Hotels, Airbnbs, VRBOs, or maybe you stay with a friend and go couch surfing. It's up to you. But just the same as airfare, book early. Save money. Check for weekly rates. Maybe you've got hotel points that you don't want to expire. And other things to consider when you're doing lodging. Does it need to be walkable from the venue? Do you need a parking space, whether you're driving in or renting a car? And then just in general, consider other amenities that you might need while you're traveling to book the appropriate lodging. You've got your tickets, you know how you're getting there, and you know where you're staying. The next thing, once you arrive, do some recon and get some supplies. Personally, I like to find a grocery store and stock up on a couple things. Then I like to scope out the area for what's around. Things to consider, do you need breakfast or coffee in the morning to get going? Do you need to grab lunch before you head to the festival? Think about these things as you get settled in. The last thing I want to cover is if you're traveling with a group or with friends. Keep in mind, everyone travels differently. Some people have a lot of travel experience, while others don't. Some people have developed travel preferences and routines, so just be aware of that. At the end of the day, just be patient with your group, and remember, it's all about having a safe journey and having a great time at the festival. Well, that's it for part one. Next in the series, we're going to be covering festival logistics. Thanks for watching. If you like the crowd vibes, smash the like button, share your favorite videos, and subscribe to get alerts for new stuff. Thanks, y'all. Enjoy the crowd vibes.